Hello and welcome. I'm Cynthia Miller and today we're going to paint the beautiful purple bearded iris. I'm showing you my new color grid here. I've got a couple of new colors so I decided to put them all out to just have a look. It's really handy to do this if you're just starting watercolor. And I'm going to use the one on the bottom right hand side blue violet. And uh, we're starting in here with the, the stems. We're going to get those started first. Um, I'm using a, a really lovely uh, fresh emerald green mixed with sap green. I'm using a, a small round brush. I believe it is zero to two size. And uh, from our template, we're, we're just uh, starting to fill in the, the stems and the base of the bud. Um, we're, we're creating a, a little bit of, um, I don't know, it's, it's like a little basket that these flowers um, emerge from. And uh, we're doing a full bloom on the top, we're doing a bud halfway down, and then the bloom on the, the bottom right is more of a, a halfway bloom. And I'm going to be sharing a, a picture of that when we start uh, painting it. Um, these were actually growing in my garden not that long ago, and they have since... Um, you know, finish their cycle and we'll see them again next year but they were just phenomenal this year we didn't have a whole lot of rain so they weren't rained upon the the you know when the breeze blows through them they're just just beautiful just spectacular and so I really enjoyed um, taking pictures of these and and sketching um, them out the best I can and um, yeah just make your mix of green get your stems going and um, it, I, I think that, you know, what I've said in the past with flowers, it's important that the flower looks like it belongs on that stem. So you have to look at the angle of it. Does it make sense? You know, plants are usually almost perfect in their formation. Once in a while, there'll be something that's a little bit off, but it, it's where they they uh, originate from. The, the petals, the, the leaves, they all have to come from that central point. And so just have a really good look at your template and, and make sure it makes sense. Now I'm going to start here with a little bit of uh, the yellow. I'm using the Indian yellow. And um, I just love that that uh, shade. It's it's very bright. I'm filling in, and I believe this is what they call the beards on the the bearded iris. I I did a little bit of research, but it was sort of hard to find a definitive answer. Some iris do not have that that um, sort of look to them that has the the real. I believe it's the pollen that is that is out there, the stamen. Um, and it just sort of sits on top of the, the petals, the lower petals. Showing you my, my colors here. This is the beautiful blue violet. And like I said, I don't really have to do anything with that color. Um, it, it's just straight from the tube. And, and I use the Van Gogh. If you've seen the videos uh, on YouTube, I, I've done uh, introductory. So I'm just trying them out. And this is what I highly suggest if you get a card uh, or just snip a, a small strip off the bottom of your artwork before you start and then you've got a piece of paper that is that is the same as your artwork. So I'm just going to leave the the stem and the stamen for a little bit. We'll come back and, and sort of play with them a little bit afterwards. But we're going to just start right in with one of the petals and what I'm doing is putting water on the petal first and then I'm getting a, a you know, not a whole lot of pigment on my brush, just a, a light color, and I'm just filling that in. And the reason why we put water on there is because it will flow a whole lot easier, and you won't get hard lines, and the water just sort of takes the pigment out to the edge of where, where you want it to go. So we're just going to do one petal at a time. And now what I've done, while the paper is still wet, I've picked up quite a bit more a darker pigment on my brush and I am just dotting that around the outside and, and this is a really simple way to make it look a little bit ruffled. You you can probably um, you know make your template look a little bit more ruffled around the edges but this is a really easy way with color to make it look ruffled. So we're just putting a, a little bit around the edges and then we're picking up a little bit in the center so that it, it's got different shades to it. 
And here's a picture of the iris from my garden. You can see there's quite a bit of yellow at the bottom of the, the petals, but there is many, many shades of that purple throughout the whole flower. Now I'm going to let that first petal dry and move on to a petal that is not touching it. I don't really want them to merge together, so I'm skipping every other petal as I go. And I'm doing basically the same thing. I'm, I'm putting in some water, making sure that there's uh, enough moisture in there, that when I put my pigment in there, it's going to spread easily. And I, I want it to just sort of have that natural look to it as it spreads. And then I'll, I'll pick up some more pigment and um, just sort of dab it around the outside. And this works only when your paper is still wet because you want it to sort of blend into the, the light color purple. So we're putting a little bit more pigment in there, a little darker hue that um, will just make the outside of the petal look like it's, it's a little bit roughly. It gives you that illusion. Moving on to the lower petal now, um, we're just going through the same process, putting some um, water on there first. If your uh, paint is, is quite wet, then you can put it on with the pigment. But basically we want to have it spread very easily and be wet enough so that when you put the darker colors around the edge that it will look like it's roughly, and I keep using that word roughly, but that's the only way I can describe these beautiful flowers that um, just sort of blow in the breeze. Uh, so light and um, delicate. Um, before they bloom, these buds, they look like velvet. Um, and they're just, you can see how they're wrapped up in the bud. And then every day you go out and look at them and they're unraveled a little bit more. And they just sort of pop out this beautiful triad of, of petals and when you look down the center of an iris you see the three different petals uh, emerging from the central spot and it, it's just so perfect and a lot of times they they will be that yellow color and so just um, yeah putting a little bit more around the edge and you'll find that most of these uh, purple ones at least the bottom petals are a little bit darker and I'm not sure why that is but maybe those were the outside petals uh, maybe the inside petals um, not exposed to the sun quite as long um, but there is a definite um, shade difference in the the upper petals and the lower petals and here I'm putting quite a bit on here so I mean the key really is to find that happy medium where those different shades of that same color will will blend together you don't want, you know, one petal to be too dark and um, and the other ones to be too light. So it really does take a little bit of a, a trained eye to to just, you know, fix these these uh, little changes as you go. And you want these ones to look like they're folding over. The other ones are sort of just upright in in the air and the breeze, and these ones are folding over. So there's a certain you know, depth to that as well. Maybe around the bottom it will be a little bit heavier looking. But just keep playing with them. Just um, even after these were um, finished and photographed, I think I still changed the, the shade of these lower these lower flowers. I thought they were just a touch dark for, for the ones on top. So then I just added another layer to the top ones. And I think you want that that stamen to look like it's it's sitting on top it, it it's um it's part of the the, the flower but it, it really does have this own uh, its own um sort of presence the way that it sits on the top and again just make sure that you skip every other petal so it gives that petal a chance to dry i think it's important to keep each of the petals separate as you paint so that they have their own sort of unique characteristics to them. Every petal is, is definitely not going to be the same, but it can be pretty close to make it look like it's it's all one flower. I think that's, that's the key. So the shapes of the petals are important. You want to look at um, those shapes before you actually start painting because um, once you start painting, you can't really change the shape of them. 
you know, you can um, make them look like they are uh, a little bit puffy or um, flowing outwards or downwards or, or sort of give them that round shape um, with, with, you know, the shading that you do. Um, but if, if the composition, the, if the sketch doesn't make sense, then you're going to have a hard time make, uh, making your painting look like it makes sense. And I mean, we're, we're creating um, art, but we're also creating something that we're all very already familiar with. This, this flower that is the, the iris, we're familiar with how it is supposed to look. So we want our artwork to incorporate that into it. So when someone looks at it, it's recognizable. They're not saying, oh no, you know, it shouldn't have four petals, it should only have three. We've got the three, we've got the details of the, of the flower in the drawing. And that's all I'm saying is just make sure that your drawing is how you want it to be before you start putting pa paint to your paper. Now I had a, um, a little bit of a challenge getting the shape of this petal to be what I wanted it to be. And, and I think that I was just trying to make it look too perfect. Um, but, um, you know, after doing three or four of them, um, you know, I realized that it just needed a little bit more height, a little bit more width. And... Um, you know, however that turned out from there, I was I was totally fine with it. Again, the 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 width and the height of this one, your other side petals, you want them to to um, sort of match that on either side. Yet look like they're sort of floating in the air, caught in the breeze. And this is starting to to come together now. When you when you get you know five or six petals done, you start to see that it's coming together. So again, just a little bit lighter on the top than the bottom petals. And you can see I'm, I'm using different um, ways of stroking the paint on. Uh, they have a certain um, sort of vein pattern in them that comes from that central stem of the petal. And um, your paint strokes will dry with that particular angle that you put on them. So it is it is important that you use your paint strokes to the advantage. And just going over the, the side ones once again, giving them a little bit more color, a little bit more depth. Just pointing out a lighter part of the petal there at the top. And I, I kind of like the way that looks because it does look airy. It does look like you can almost see the the other side of the petal. They're so light and see-through. And so just playing with the, the stamen and the area around the, the petals. The, you know, you can't really draw the interior part of the, the flower um, at this angle. So... Um, I just add a little bit of yellow orange to it afterwards. There does seem to be this um, sort of mixture of when you look closely at an artist, uh, an iris, it looks like it's been hand painted because the the orange, the the yellow bits at the bottom of the petal, they're just like almost like a tiger's back. The way that the different colors work together, it's absolutely beautiful. So I encourage you to, to go and have a look at, at Iris, if, if you possibly can, in real life. So I'm just painting the center petal now, and I'm going around the bud, but you still want to make that flower look complete by putting that petal on the bottom in the middle. So here's my photograph of the Iris in the garden, and this is the three-quarter blossom I call it and it's really where the bud is just starting to open up so this will open up into a full flower and um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things starting with the left very left petal you can see that is really the unfolding piece at the very tip you can see a very dark spot that's the unfolding piece and also pay attention to the the line so the middle the middle petal is sort of folded over on itself and then the right hand petal is like a little cup it's sort of opening up on this other side and again it's got 
very uh, dark uh, point on it where you can see it's just sort of starting to unfold. And then of course the fourth um, petal behind it. So just um, starting with the same process that we did with the upper petals, we're going to do this three quarter blossom with very light, a little bit of water and then just adding on some nice light tones and, and bringing those darker tones to the edges, letting them blend a little bit but also using those strokes with your brush to put those impressions of the lines that I pointed out in the blossom. And so when you start to paint, you start to look at nature and, and buildings and um, the way people walk, their shadows. Um, you start to see shapes differently. You start to see the light and the dark of the shapes and you no longer are taken into the shape of the actual thing. It's the shape of the, the lights and darks that, that start to stand out for you. So moving on to the, the middle petal of this three quarter blossom and again just starting out with the lighter side, the lighter shades and this um, one tends to sort of fold over on itself so it creates a little bit of a shadow and if you can incorporate that shadow into your painting, you'll, it will help it come alive. I think that, you know, these, these shadows that, that are seen but unseen, um, the, the artist's eye really um, can uh, bring that in. And sometimes it doesn't come in until the end where you start to say, okay, the, the picture is almost there. How can I bring in some shadows? Because that really does make it look realistic, even in flowers even in leaves and um, gardens. The, the shadows are there and that's really what makes it realistic. So just adding a little bit more pigment um, around the outside of the petal, keeping those brush strokes, creating those lines. And I think that my motivation here was really to create the look of velvet. When you look at the buds of these flowers, they're just magnificent. They're just so soft, so delicate, so plush, so perfect. And that's really what I was, um, you know, my goal is to recreate that feeling of uh, such perfection, really. So I've moved on to the third petal and I'm only doing half of it. I'm just doing half of this petal right now. This is the one that looks like a little cup. It, it's unfolding, but it, it's, it's uh, creating this shape that, that has this inside and outside space. And so we want to sort of replicate that in how um, dark we make it, how light we make the inside, and how we create the shapes with our brush stroke. So moving on to the top half of the second petal, just doing the same procedure, taking my time and just getting those shades right. Is it a lighter shade that is in the center of the flower? Is it a darker shade where the petal sort of overlaps? Just um, putting everything into proportion, keeping those brush strokes moving. So just moving on to the other side of this petal and so it goes kind of on the other side of the middle one. Just making it look like it's a little cup. And uh, I love this, this aspect of the iris, this three quarter bloom. And I'm glad that we figured out how to paint it. So we've got one last little petal on this flower and it's uh, a little bit of a, a point shape just behind it. It's the uh, next petal unraveling from this beautiful blossom. And so now we're going to move to the bud. And if you've ever seen these in person, they're this beautiful formation of uh, the petals are just wrapped around themselves, just rolled almost. And so it's, it's just sort of emerging from, from the green um, 
basket that I was talking about before. Every every blossom has sort of like a little basket that grows upward with it and then it creates this sort of like tissue paper around it and, and holds it. And um, the, the blossom is this dark, dark purple and um, yeah, I guess the, I guess the, the shape is important and to show that the green at the bottom sort of blends in with the purple as you go and the idea that it's unwrapping, it's un, unfolding. And so I worked on the greens a little bit more. I worked on the bed a little bit more. I worked on evening out the colors so that the petals at the bottom of the big blossom at top are sort of blend a little bit better. I think that I um, had left it to be quite light um, initially and then I added some more pigment to it. So I hope you've enjoyed this. As I've mentioned before, we have these fun paint circles every Thursday we get together on Zoom and uh, this was basically what we did in the summer months and um, well actually I guess it's this the spring months yet. So we do this every week and if you'd like to join us just click on the link to register and we paint all kinds of wonderful things uh, no matter what's going on. Uh, we've got flowers, landscapes, sunsets, mountain scenes, um, all kinds of sacred symbols, and uh, I, I want to paint everything, so I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> so I hope you join us. Take care.